In the previous videos, we have reviewed the basics of corrosion and corrosion potentials. In this video, we will look at corrosion of steel in concrete. Reinforced concrete is generally durable, even in harsh exposure conditions such as coastal areas or alpine climates. This durable behaviour is because the highly alkaline concrete allows the steel to form a passive film. The passive film protects the steel and the corrosion rate is negligibly low. Nevertheless, corrosion of the reinforcing steel can be caused by different mechanisms, namely by carbonation of the concrete and by local breakdown of the passive film due to the presence of chlorides. Carbonation of the concrete is a process that happens when concrete is exposed to carbon dioxide, which is present in the atmosphere. Carbonation reduces the pH of the concrete pore solution down to values around 8 or 9. The carbonation front penetrates through the concrete cover, which is a process that can take many decades. Obviously, the thicker the concrete cover, the longer it takes until the carbonation reaches the reinforcing steel. If the carbonation depth reaches the steel, the passive layer is not as stable anymore as in the initially high pH of uncarbonated concrete. However, significant corrosion will only occur in carbonated concrete when there is substantial water exposure, for example when the concrete becomes temporarily wet due to rain. In carbonated concrete, the corrosion of the steel is generally uniformly distributed on the steel surface. Cathodic and anodic reactions happen on virtually the same area. This type of corrosion is also referred to as microcell or uniform corrosion. As we saw in video 1, current density is proportional to the reaction rate, that is, the rate of metal loss. In carbonation induced corrosion, the rate of metal loss is generally not very high. Rates such as of the order of up to 10 micrometer per year may be possible. Over time, corrosion products start to fill up the concrete pore system. Eventually, rust stains and concrete cracking and spalling become apparent. Therefore, this kind of corrosion can generally be detected with visual inspection. The second frequent cause for corrosion of steel in concrete is the presence of chlorides. Chlorides can come from exposure to marine environment or de-icing salts. In such environments, chlorides will penetrate through the pore system of the concrete. Again, this chloride ingress is a process that can take decades. The larger the concrete cover thickness, the longer the chloride ingress will take. If the chlorides reach the reinforcing steel in sufficient quantity, the passive film breaks down locally. Corrosion initiates at the breakdown location, which depends on local, often microscopically small weaknesses at the steel-concrete interface. The localised nature of chloride-induced corrosion is an important difference to carbonation-induced corrosion. The anodic area, here indicated in red, is often much smaller than the cathodic area shown in blue. The spatial separation of anode and cathode leads to a galvanic current flowing through the concrete. This type of corrosion is also referred to as macrocell corrosion because the galvanic element can have dimensions of up to one metre or even beyond. As we saw in video 2, in corrosion, the total anodic current equals the total cathodic current. Therefore, the area ratio between a large cathode and a small anode means that high local anodic current densities can occur. Remember that current density is the current divided by the electrode area on which the reaction occurs. In practice, these high anodic current densities mean high local rates of metal losses. In extreme cases, corrosion rates of up to 1 mm per year are possible in chloride-induced corrosion. This photograph shows an example of the significant local corrosion attack possible in chloride-induced corrosion. Such steel sectional loss may occur without visible signs such as cracks and rust stains appearing at the concrete surface. After removing the concrete, the significant local corrosion attack becomes apparent. The question here is, 
How can we detect this local corrosion damage during inspections before the structure shows further degradation? In this video, we have seen how concrete protects steel from corrosion, namely by enabling the formation of a passive film. However, both carbonation of the concrete and ingress of chlorides can cause corrosion. Carbonation-induced corrosion mainly leads to concrete cracking and spalling. Chloride-induced corrosion, on the other hand, can rapidly and locally reduce the rebar cross-section. As this local corrosion attack cannot always be detected visually at the concrete surface, we need non-destructive test methods. In the next video, we will see how the measurement of potentials permits the detection of localized corrosion in concrete.